So in this video, we're going to continue our derivation of the PN junction diode uh, current as a function of voltage relationship. So in the last video, we said that if we've got a PN junction diode. It's got a certain depletion region. Uh, we can calculate the total current flowing through this diode J uh, by summing the current from the electrons uh, at this point, plus the current from the holes at this point. And by the point, uh, by point, I just mean the location in the along the x coordinate. And remember, the reason that we can do that is because these currents, uh, whether they're let's, whether they're uh, the same or not, they're generally not the same. Uh, they're constant throughout the depletion region. So we can just write J as Jn plus Jp. So in order to find these two currents individually, uh, we said previously that we can solve the continuity equation in the n region for delta p and in the p region for delta n, because these are the dominant carriers responsible at this point. And we can just plug in the point x equals 0 into that continuity equation, and we can solve for the total current. So we're going to start with solving the continuity equation in the n region for delta p. So if we write the continuity equation, uh, we know that it's the time derivative of the holes is just equal to uh, minus 1 over q times the derivative of the current flowing in uh, plus whatever generation that's due to light or other sources uh, minus delta p over tau p, which is the excess recombination. So we've ignored the thermal recombination because the two terms cancel. And so we know that... Uh, Within this depletion region, the electric field is very large, and we know that uh, we've got some positively or negatively charged um, acceptor ions on the left and some positively charged donor ions on the right. And these are what generates the electric field. But we're assuming that there's no electric field in either one of these regions. So E is equal to zero in both of these regions. So right off the bat, we know that we don't have to worry about the drift current because the drift current is entirely due to the electric field. So that's just equal to zero. So we don't have to worry about that in, in solving our continuity equation. We also didn't say, I didn't say anything about us having to worry about light uh, or any other excess source of generation. So we can also assume that that is zero. So we can ignore that term and we can ignore one of these uh, current terms. And we're also only interested in the device's steady state response at this point, uh, steady state response. Uh, and that's because if we apply a voltage very quickly to a diode, then we're going to get some chaos going on here. Uh, it, it might be, well, it's generally not going to be that weird, but it might overshoot, undershoot, uh, whatever. It's we, we don't know that at this point, but we're only interested in the steady state. What happens as T uh, goes to infinity. And that's because the time scales that these changes, these rapid changes occur on, are on the order of nanoseconds or picoseconds. And generally, when we're in the electronics lab, that's a little smaller than the time duration than we're interested in. Not always, but, but in this case, it is. So we're going to set we're going to say that this is equal to zero as well, the time derivative, because we're interested in the steady state response. So we know that. Uh, we know that the diffusion current uh, for holes is just minus 1 over, or minus q times dp times d delta p dx. And so if we plug that in here uh, and we erase all the other things in this equation, we'll end up with uh, a final form of the continuity equation, which is that dp times del squared delta p del x squared is equal to delta p over tau p. This is the continuity equation that we need to solve in the n region in order to know the carrier concentration uh, as a function of x. So uh, we can rearrange this a little bit just to make it a little prettier. Uh, just divide both sides by dp. And when we do that, we get something interesting. Uh, since this is differentiating twice with respect to distance, uh, this term must have units of length squared. Well, that's, that's kind of interesting. Uh, so we can 
just make a somewhat arbitrary substitution and replace this bottom term with a term we're going to call LP squared. So rewriting, uh, it's just equal to delta P over LP squared. And that's partly just to make our lives easier, but it's also to physically interpret what's going on here. Uh, so there is this so-called diffusion length uh, that's a, the product of the diffusion coefficient and the recombination lifetime. And that's, that's just interesting. So if we solve this equation, we know that just from basic differential equations, the solution is going to look like uh, delta P as a function of X is just A uh, times the minus exponential plus B times the positive exponential. And the only thing that we need to do to solve this equation is apply boundary conditions. So the reason they're called boundary conditions is generally because we know what the function should look like. We know its values at the edges of whatever our system is, and we want to find out what it looks like in between. But if we had a point in between, say we measured the hole or electron current at some point, then we could use that just as well instead of the solution at the boundaries. There's nothing special uh, about the boundaries per se. So if we go back to our physical model, which is what I always suggest um, you do if you're, if you're at all uncertain about what to do next, um, we know what the whole concentration should look like in the end side. We know it follows this kind of distribution. Uh, and in this situation, uh, x equals zero is at the edge of the depletion region because the region of interest is the N region itself, not the, not the depletion region. And this is the direction of increasing X. So what happens, uh, how do we solve for A and B? Uh, well, it's not immediately clear how we might do that. And I'm gonna make a, a certain assumption. I'm gonna say that this diode is actually extremely long. In fact, it's so long uh, that the length of the diode from X equals zero to the end is much, much greater than LP. In other words, when we plug in L, when we plug in X equals L, this term on the right will blow up to infinity. So this term on the right will be so nonsensically large, like 10 to the 30, 10 to the 50, whatever, um, that B must be equal to zero in order for this equation to make any sense. So for a very long diode, uh, B must be equal to zero. And if your diode is shorter, has some finite length L, in general, this isn't going to be true. Uh, but for this, and we'll do an example in which that's the case. But for this simple derivation, uh, we're going to assume that the diode is very long or infinitely long, if you like. And in this case, our formula simplifies uh, to the following. It's just A e to the minus X over LP. So all we need to do is find A. Uh, and we can do this with our second boundary condition. So remember in the last video, we said that we could relate uh, the total hole concentration uh, on the P side, uh, PP, uh, to the hole concentration on the N side at the very edge of the depletion region, uh, PN. And we said that the equation for that was just PN uh, is equal to PP times E to the minus VBI over phi t. And if we apply a voltage, then we just replace VBI uh, with VBI minus VD. And we'll get that uh, PN is just equal to PP uh, times e to the minus VBI over phi t times e to the VD over phi t. And this, the reason I wrote it as two separate expressions is because this is the equilibrium uh, hole concentration, PP naught. Uh, and that's a, useful, a, that's a useful expression because it just allows us to say, well, that PN is just equal to some number, uh, PP naught, times the exponential uh, of the diode voltage. So if we plug that back into our equation, uh, we say that delta P at zero at the edge of the depletion region, that's A e to the minus zero uh, over LP, which is just, well, uh, A, because E to the zero is just one. Uh, and that's equal to, you might at first just think that that's equal to uh, 
this expression that we've just uh, we've just derived, pp naught times e to the vd over phi t. But uh, there's a subtlety here. This is the change in whole concentration from equilibrium, and this is the total whole concentration. So we actually have to write this expression uh, as, so a is not equal to this. Uh, we have to write this as the total whole concentration uh, VD, e to the VD over phi t minus the equilibrium whole concentration PP naught. And that's why I introduced this little uh, expression here, PP naught. Uh, and so A is just equal to uh, PP naught, which is just a number that we can calculate with the, our equation on the right, times E to the VD over phi t minus one. And so altogether, our total concentration um, as a function of x looks like PP naught times E to the VD over phi t minus one uh, times e to the minus x over LP. So this is the whole concentration within the N region, or if we just draw this out graphically, after the edge of the depletion region, the whole concentration starts falling off exponentially and reaches a minimum of the equilibrium whole concentration, uh, PP naught. So, uh, take a deep breath. We're we're almost through all of the all the hairy math. Um, it turns out that if you solve this in the n region or in the sorry in the p region for the n carriers, you'll get the same exact result. You'll get that it drops off uh, from a peak value near the edge of the, the depletion region to its equilibrium value uh, and p naught. So the solution looks almost exactly the same, except you have to worry about signs and and whatnot, but intuitive, this is the picture uh, that is most valuable to remember. So the only thing left now is to calculate the current flowing through the diode. But we know that the current is just in total, uh, it's just JP plus JN. And we also said that since the current is constant within the depletion region, so if we can calculate the whole current here and the electron current here, then we will have our total current uh, because the current is the same uh, here as it is here. So to calculate the current, well, we know that there's no electric field within this region or basically no electric field. So the whole current is entirely due uh, to diffusion. Uh, and that's a total derivative. So we can just write the, write the diffusion current and we've got an expression for the carriers. So all we need to do is differentiate that with respect to x. And so if we do that, uh, then the only thing that's a function of x is this expression on the right. So if we differentiate that, we just get a 1 over LP out front, or negative, so the negatives cancel. Uh, and it becomes QDP times uh, PN naught divided by LP uh, times e to the VD over phi t minus 1. Uh, and we're only interested in the whole current at x equals zero. So we don't need to worry about the e to the minus x over LP. And similarly, if you keep track carefully of all the signs, uh, you'll get that JN uh, at zero is just QDN times NP naught over LN times e to the VD over phi t minus one. And so the total current uh, and we're, we're engineers, we don't like dealing with any more, um, any more variables than we have to. So we just lump these all together and call these uh, JN set. And so if we factor out uh, this expression on the right, then we get that J is just equal to JN plus JP, which is equal to JN set uh, plus JP set Uh, all multiplied by e to the vd over phi t minus 1. And we can be even lazier and just call this whole expression uh, j sat. So our j, uh, our current as a function of voltage is just e to the vd over phi t minus 1 times a constant. And this is our current voltage relationship. So if we know the area, uh, then the total current is just equal to the area times the current density j. So 
after all of that complicated uh, mathematics, after the entire derivation, we're just left with this relatively simple expression. Uh, it's a function of all sorts of fun parameters, the diffusion length, uh, diffusion coefficient, the elementary charge, um, the carrier equilibrium carrier concentration, um, but it reduces to this fairly simple expression. And it's entirely known variables, and it's only a function of VD. So once you plug in all the values to get JSAT, you know everything you need to know to calculate the current. Um, so I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please post them below. And in the next video, we're going to do a brief example to sort of consolidate everything that we've learned in the last few videos. And so I uh, hope to see you then. Thanks for watching.